Right, so did you know that there is a way to connect multiple apps inside your Mac to stream audio and MIDI back and forth? So imagine this, you are used to working in Ableton, you enjoy recording MIDI and editing it there, it's part of your workflow, but then you can send that MIDI, like if you had a virtual cable, into another DAW or maybe a standalone synth, which you like the sounds of. And then those sounds, that actual audio, can be streamed back into Ableton on its own separate track. I'm gonna show you how to do that today and it's super easy it involves two kinds of drivers one of which is already on your Mac you just need to enable it and the other one you can download for free and uh, I'm gonna be using Ableton and GarageBand so let's get right to it okay so to make this work we're gonna need two things one of which is already installed on your Mac so you just need to activate it and the second one you can download for free and it's super unintrusive let's think of them as like cables right you need to connect Ableton to GarageBand to send MIDI from Ableton into GarageBand. So we need a MIDI driver for that. And then we need to send audio from GarageBand back into Ableton. So we need an audio driver for that. So it's like two virtual cables. And the first one, the MIDI one, is the so-called IAC driver, which is already on your Mac. You just need to enable it. And to do that, we can just open up a spotlight search. You type in MIDI, and then you open up the audio MIDI setup. In my case, it already shows me a bunch of stuff. In your case, you're probably only going to see this here, where it says audio devices so you want to go to window and since i already open up the midi studio window it gives me the option to hide it in your case it's probably going to say show midi studio so let's go to the midi studio and here you have all of the midi devices that have either been attached to your mac in the past but aren't currently and that would be these ones here that are grayed out then you have the devices which are currently attached to your mac even if it's just maybe a virtual device like the iac driver which you can see right here now in my case it's already active in your case you might have to click on it or something but you know pretty easy procedure then you can close this command Q to get rid of it and that's it as far as the MIDI part goes let's get that second virtual cable and that one you're gonna have to download but again it's completely free completely unintrusive piece of software so you just open up your browser you type in existential audio black hole and it's the first result here so I just click on it then you can go to wiki don't be intimidated by github just go to installation download the latest installer and they're going to ask you for your email address your first name and your last name i know what you're thinking you don't want to be subscribing to any service and they're just going to fill your inbox with spam but I mean, trust me, I have installed this driver almost a year ago. It will be a year in December and I have never received even just one single email from them. So, you know, they want your address, but they're not going to do anything with it as far as I know. So you just give them that information. You click on subscribe for free Mac download and then you will receive the only actual email they'll send you, which will contain your download link. So then you just download the driver and you install it um, like you would any other app on your Mac. If you want detailed instructions for that, you can find them on Black Hole's GitHub page here, but it's pretty easy, right? You just say yes, yes, yes. And then boom, the installation was successful. So you do that, command Q. And now you have all the tools you need to get this thing working. And it's gonna be super easy, so let's get right to it. I'm just gonna open up a new Ableton project. And uh, as you can see, it's gonna create two MIDI tracks and two audio tracks. Now we don't need doubles. We just need one MIDI track to send that MIDI into GarageBand and then one audio track to receive audio back from GarageBand. So let's get rid of these. So uh, normally what you would do is you would drag a virtual instrument onto this MIDI track, right? But we're not gonna do that, right? We wanna use GarageBand bands virtual instruments so we just set the output of the track and as you can see we have the iac driver here as an option right we can double check in preferences uh, that's command comma and you go to midi and as you can see here is your iac driver now i don't need to input any midi into ableton from some third-party piece of software so i have not enabled any of the functions of the in driver i just want midi to be sent from ableton to something else so i just enabled the track function that is going to send all the MIDI notes and then the remote function as well for things such as MIDI CCs. So if you want to maybe say control the cutoff frequency of some instrument in GarageBand, in that case, you would want to enable that as well. So that's that. I'm going to record arm this track, right? If you have any MIDI controllers connected to your Mac, you can just play some notes and the MIDI meter here should show some activity. In my case, I don't have anything connected here at the moment, which is why I'm going to use my computer keyboard. You can just 
just press this button here where it says computer MIDI keyboard. Gonna activate that, play some notes. Right, you see the mirror lights up. So Ableton is receiving those MIDI notes and it's sending them to the IAC driver. So now we can open up GarageBand. You wanna create a new empty project, of course, and it's gonna be a software instrument type of project. Create, and by default, it's gonna load up this beautiful electric piano library. And uh, well, GarageBand doesn't really have a MIDI kind of setup. In other words, whatever MIDI devices it can use as an input, be it your controller you might have attached to your laptop or the IAC driver, which is always active, it will listen to those MIDI notes. So no need to set up anything into GarageBand as far as MIDI is concerned, which means that we can just go back to Ableton and as we press some keys here, we are going to trigger sounds in GarageBand. So let's do that. Here's Ableton again. I'm going to press some keys. Right. And as you can hear, our electric piano here is picking up those MIDI notes and generating sound for us. Good. So here's the beautiful part. You can just record your MIDI clips in Ableton using the workflow that you love. So let's just do that. I'm just going to press record here. All right, just record a little stupid clip. And uh, what I like to do is I like to loop this section, all right? Just like that. And let's adjust the end point here a bit and the start point as well. Then let's activate the loop. And now I can just press play. Ableton is gonna loop my clip and I can go into GarageBand and edit the sound as I want, all right? You could use this simple instrument interface here, or you could even go further and use some of GarageBand's plugins. And there are quite a few, as you can see, you've got your EQs, dynamics. You can even use Apple's audio units. You could do all of that or you could do none of that and just wait for your audio to be streamed back into Ableton, which I'm going to show you how to do in just a second, and then use Ableton's plugins if that is part of your workflow. So sky's the limit. You can do whatever you prefer. Me personally, I like to just use these simple controls here to get the sound closer to what I have in my mind and then do the extra fine tuning back in Ableton. So I'm going to press play. Uh, Ableton is going to loop our MIDI clip here and I can just make my adjustments. Right, let's say I was happy with that sound. What I can do at this point is I can actually edit my MIDI, which is kind of the whole purpose of this, right? To be able to record and edit MIDI in the DAW, which you're most used to using for that purpose, right? Bit of a word salad, but let's just double click on our clip here. You can edit your velocity levels. You can move your notes around, right? You can even write in some automation here, uh, pitch bend maybe, or modulation wheel. I mean, you can do all the stuff that you would normally do with your MIDI clips if you had a virtual instrument loaded up directly into Ableton. That MIDI again is going to go into GarageBand. We can turn some knobs in GarageBand and at this point you can stream that sound back into Ableton by using our virtual audio cable which is Black Hole. So let's open up our preferences here in GarageBand. Command plus comma and let's go to audio and as you can see by default this is using your system settings. So you know whatever headphones or speakers you might have attached you want to change this so that the output device is black hole and the input I'm going to disable because we won't be sending any audio into this project, right? So, and then back in Ableton, again, command plus comma to open your preferences. You go to audio and look at that. I had set it up correctly already. Um, you want to make sure that the input in this case is set to black hole so that it receives what GarageBand is outputting into black hole. And as the output device, you can keep whatever you have, you know, even just your laptop speakers if you don't have anything else. In my case, I have my headphones, so I'm going to use those. And then that's why we needed the second audio track. Now I'm going to set this selector here to one and two left and right because we have the option to stream stereo, so why not use it? I mean, on this classic electric piano here, we added some chorus, which is probably widening the stereo image anyway, so might as well use it. And then you want to record arm that track, move your cursor back to the start here, disable the loop because otherwise it's going to record several takes of that same MIDI part, which doesn't make any sense. And then we want to set the monitoring here to automatic. And then you can just press record. Mm -hmm. 
now we have our audio clip on its own track and at this point since we have committed those midi notes and that sound that we created we might as well quit GarageBand and even remove our first MIDI track here so that we're left with just one track and we can use Ableton's audio effects. If that is our workflow, we can use a limiter to reduce the dynamic range. We can use EQs, we can use, you know, whatever we want. Our usual plugins, which we feel familiar with. And yeah, that was pretty much it. All right, I hope that was useful. If so, don't forget to like and subscribe. That really tells the YouTube algorithm that this is valuable content and it tells it to recommend it to more people so you will help me out a lot if you did that also share this with your producer friends if you think it might help them too and yeah that being said thank you so much for watching and i'll see you in the next video take care